Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato and today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about the circle of fifths, the circle of fourths, and why they're both important to know. Now anyone that's watched this channel for any length of time has probably seen one of my whiteboard lectures where I have my drawing of the circle of fifths on there and I'm teaching you what key signatures are, right? Key of C has zero sharps or flats, key of G has one sharp, key of F has one flat, so on and so forth. We'll get to that. Really, the importance of these are how they are used to propel music. Before we go any further, let me clear something up. A perfect fifth descending is a perfect fourth ascending. G down to C is a perfect fifth descending. G up to C is a perfect fourth ascending and vice versa, right? If I go from C down to G, that's a perfect fourth descending and then C up to G is a perfect fifth ascending. The circle of fifths moves clockwise. The circle of fourths moves counterclockwise. When moving in a clockwise direction, it creates a dominant to tonic resolution or five to one resolution. Let's say you start on D. So D to G is a five to one in the key of G, D being the five chord, G being the one chord. Then C to F is five to one in F, B flat to E flat is five one in E flat. And then maybe you could do something like this, A to D. I move to a different part around the circle but I still did a five to one cadence, A being the five chord in the key of D. So five to one, A to D. A five to one cadence is called an authentic cadence. If you have, let's say, D to G, and you have the F sharp of the D chord, the third of the D chord, resolving up to the tonic of the G chord, that's called a perfect authentic cadence because in the top voice, it goes from the leading tone to the tonic. Leading tone, which would be the third of the dominant chord to the root of the tonic. Any other movement, let's say you had this, where you have a common tone, D, so the root of the D chord to the fifth of the G chord, that would be an imperfect authentic cadence. That's actually not that important, but I thought I would put it in there. The four to one or plagal cadence moves in the opposite direction. Now remember the intervals here, right? So this would be some F to C to G to D, to A. So these are all four to one in the key of C, right? Then think of it like this, four to one in the key of G, four to one key of D, four to one in the key of A. That doesn't have the same propulsion towards the tonic that a five to one cadence has, right? So listen, so if I go from F to C, it has a very different feel than G, to C, right? The 5 1 has a little bit more strength to it. I did a post a couple months ago on Instagram and I was playing over a D pedal tone. I refer to that as a series of plagal cadences because I start on D major, but then the plagal cadences go around the circle of force. B flat, F, C, G, and then D. To me, that has a beautiful cascading effect. You can also have what we call a minor plagal cadence or a minor four to one. Okay, this is very common in pop music, actually. So let's say that we're in the key of C, that would be F minor to C major. Okay, minor four to one. Typically, the way it's used is from the four major to the four minor guys have all heard this two to one another thing you've seen me talk about if you've been watching this channel or if you have my Beato book is the cycle of dominant chords okay that would be let's say you have C7 resolving to F7 resolving to B flat 7 E flat 7 A flat 7 D flat 7 F sharp 7 B7 E7 A7 D7 G7 then back to C7. I have a series of exercises in my book that goes over how to improvise over those so that you learn where all the seven to three resolutions are from dominant chord to dominant chord. Let's say you start in C7. Root, third, fifth, flat, 
flat seven to the third of the next chord. So that's C seven to F seven. So what I'm doing there is I'm going five, one, five, one, or really I'm going five to five to five to five to five, right? So I'm thinking of where all the resolutions are for each note. I can just hear them. I can talk and just hear them. Another thing that learning the circle of fifths or the circle of fourths is good for are key centers. So if we bring up the circle here and we look at it and we start on C major, you'll see C and you'll see a small A. The lowercase letter indicates a minor chord. So C major and A minor have the same key signature, which is no sharps or flats. The key of G and E minor have one sharp, which is F sharp. The key of D or B minor have two sharps, which is F sharp and C sharp. Sharps have a particular order. We call it the order of sharps. F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp, A sharp, E sharp, B sharp. And flats have its own order. So in the key of F, you have one flat, which is B flat. The key of B flat has B flat and E flat. So the order of flats goes like this. B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F flat. Okay, here's one way to remember these. The order of flats, Bob Evans ate donuts, got crazy fat, right? B, E, A, D, G, C, F. You can remember the order of sharps with fat cat go dead after eating burritos. Okay, so these things need to be memorized. You should actually draw a circle Make it like a clock, put in the little slash marks on it, and then write it out. Brexit writing uh, clockwise and then counterclockwise. Fill in the numbers of sharps and flats. Easy to do. Just need to memorize it and then memorize that order of flats using these two devices, right? Just write them out and test yourself. Lastly, I want to talk about the terms tonic, predominant, and dominant chords. The tonic chords are the one chord, the three chord, and the six chord. Okay, so why are they tonic chords? Well, if you're in the key of C major, the one chord has the note C, E, G. The three chords has E, G, B, and the six chord has A, C, E. Each of those chords contains two of the tonic note chords. So the tonic is C, E, G in the key of C major. The three chord, E minor, has E and G, the third and fifth of C major, and the sixth chord, A minor, has C and E, the root and third. Those are why they are called tonic chords. The predominant chords are chords that contain the fourth of the scale. In the key of C, the fourth of the scale is the note F. F is the subdominant chord, and that is used for our plagal cadence. Well, that contains one of the tonic notes, C, of the key. And then it has the notes F and A. F, of course, is the fourth of the scale. The other predominant chord is D minor, the two chord, which contains F and A, which are both in F major, and the note F is the fourth degree of the scale. Dominant chords in a major key will contain the leading tone, if it's a triad, or the leading tone and the fourth scale degree, if it's a seventh chord. Now, the reason that these two notes are important, if it's a seventh chord, a dominant seventh chord, we call this, the leading tone B resolves up to C for C major, and the F, the flat seven of the G7 chord, resolves down a half step to the third of C major, right? So, so it has these two strong tensions, one that wants to go up by half step, one that wants to fall by a half step. That's why it's called a dominant chord. It wants to move somewhere. The other dominant chord in a major key is the seven chord, right? The seventh chord, this would be B diminished. Once again, it has the leading tone and it has the fourth scale degree, F, and both of those want to move. Don't let the video scare you. This stuff is not that complicated. All the things about sharps and flats, how many are in each key, it's a bit of memorization, but once you memorize it, you have it for the rest of your life, right? The other stuff, understanding what 
dominant chords are and authentic cadences and plagal cadences, that stuff, yeah, it's a little bit of memorization too. You want to be able to hear what they sound like. You want to be able to recognize a 4-1 cadence versus a 5-1 cadence. All these things are in my Beato book for reference. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're a first time viewer, ring the bell. That'll let you know when I go live and when a new video comes out. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. That's very important. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the new Beato ear training program at beatoeartraining.com. And if you wanna support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching.